Hi everyone, my name is Garmin from New Leaf Designs and in this tutorial video I am going to show you how to knit toe-up socks from start to finish. These are the classic New Leaf socks. It's my newest pattern, but also in a way it's my oldest pattern because this is just my favorite sock recipe. I've been knitting socks for 10 years. I've perfected it along the way and this is the result. I just absolutely love it. Uh, so in this tutorial video, we will be casting on for the toe with Judy's Magic Cast On. Then I'll show you how to increase, how to change color here. Then we're knitting to the heel. I'm going to show you how to knit the heel. It's a German short row heel. Then I'm going to show you how to pick up stitches here to prevent any gaps. Then we're going to knit up and then we're going to do the cuff and end with a very nice and stretchy bind off. That is what you will see in this tutorial video. The yarn that I am using is Scapius Metropolis. Escapius Metropolis is a wonderful sock yarn. This is perhaps my all-time favorite yarn. Uh, it is 75% merino, 25% nylon, and it is that perfect sock weight of 200 meters per 50 grams. Um, and I'm using this yarn for the solid colored parts of the sock. And for the stripy part of the sock, I am using Escapius Downtown which is a really fun self-striping sock yarn. Uh, it's got the same content, so it's also 75% merino and 25% nylon. It also has 200 meters per 50 grams. And it's just really, really fun to knit up these socks with self-striping yarn and you just see the color changing and it's really, really entertaining. Uh, I highly recommend using Scapies Downtown, this self-striping yarn, for uh, especially for beginner sock knitters because you just need a little bit more entertainment to see it through to the end. But I believe in you, you can do this. This pattern is totally suitable for beginner sock knitters. We will get there. <laughs> so the pattern, the classic New Leaf socks pattern, you can find it for free on my website. I will link it down below. You can also purchase the PDF version in my shops if you'd rather have a printable version that you can have right next to you. The pattern is available for six different adult foot sizes and you can Get it down below. Needle wise you will need circular needles. I recommend 2.25 millimeter size and 80 centimeter length. Uh, you could also use double pointed needles also called DPNs. I will not show you in the video how to do that but it will um, you will have some written instructions in the uh, pattern for the places where it differs. It doesn't differ a lot, so don't worry about it. If you're an experienced sock knitter and if you're looking for a challenge, then you can also choose for the two at a time option. Um, I will have a specific tutorial video for this uh, where I am knitting two socks at a time and you can learn how to knit two socks at a time. I'm using the same size needle, just a bit longer. I'm using a 100 centimeter cord instead of 80 centimeters. 100 centimeter cord is also totally suitable for just knitting a single sock. In the pattern it also says how much yarn you need. Uh, for all sizes you will need just one ball of Scapius Metropolis and either one or two balls of Scapius Downtown. So grab your yarn, grab your needles, and we will start casting on. So to start the socks I'm going to take my yarn A which is color 37 Istanbul for the color combination I'll be using and my circular needles and I'm going to be using both circular needle tips in my right hand. I want to hold them really close together like this and I'm going to take the yarn and have about 20 centimeters or 8 inches of a yarn tail and I'm going to lay the yarn across the top needle, the needle that's furthest away from me with the ball yarn going to the top here and the yarn tail coming towards me. So like this. And before I start with the cast on, I want to twist these yarns so that the tail is twisted underneath. So now I've taken the ball yarn towards me 
and the yarn tail is away from me. Insert your thumb and index finger in between those yarns and take them together with your other fingers so that you can tension your yarn. And now we're going to alternate putting a stitch on the bottom needle and the top needle. The top needle already has a stitch, so I'm going to put a stitch on the bottom needle. Get a good grip on your needles because my bottom needle sometimes want to, wants to flip up like this because it doesn't have a stitch yet, so that's why it's kind of moving around. And the closer your needles are together, the, the neater your cast on is going to be. Okay, so we want a, a stitch on the bottom needle. We're going to do that with our index finger yarn. And our index finger yarn is going to go around that needle. And it does not really matter if you go around this way or if you go around this way, but just go around the bottom needle. Then another stitch for the top needle, we use our thumb yarn. And also we want to go around the needle. And if this way is easier for you, then do that. If this way is easier, then, then do that. And put your fingers back in this position. So with the index finger, we go around the bottom needle and bring our fingers back to this position. With our thumb yarn, we're going around the top needle and back in this position. Because if you, if you put on a stitch and your hands are like this, then, you know, you're going to want to twist your hands back like this because then you can do the next step. Otherwise, you might get a little confused. So we're going to keep alternating the needles. So the bottom needle is next. And if you are confused about which needle gets a stitch, then you kind of uh, release the tension on your yarns. And you see that this one here is looser. So that's the one that I just did. It's on the bottom needle, so now I need to stitch on the top needle. And they always get their yarns from the opposite directions, so the top needle needs a stitch from the thumb yarn now. And there we go. And you always want to finish with a stitch on the bottom needle because then you have an even stitch count. So you want to place as many stitches on your needles as it says in the pattern. For my size, that is 10 stitches. So let's see, I have eight here and I have eight here. So nine, nine, 10, 10. But please do check the pattern. Um, for the amount of stitches that you need to cast on for your size. So I finished casting on my stitches and now I want to be knitting my first round. So uh, please do note that this very last stitch is very loose and that stitch is made with the yarn tail. If that last stitch for you is made with the ball yarn, it doesn't matter very much, but you'll need to do one step differently, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So uh, I want to place my fingers on the back of the stitches here, because otherwise this stitch can fall off. So I want to secure those, and I am turning my work with the needle tips facing to the right. I want to be knitting on what is now the top needle. Uh, to do that, I need this needle to come out to the right. So I'm going to be moving it like this, sliding it through the stitches so that the stitches on the bottom here are resting on the cable. And I have enough room now so I can uh, move both needle tips towards each other. And again, that last stitch 
which is now the very first stitch that we are going to knit, is very loose. So I'm just going to place that yarn tail in my left hand right here. Uh, and I'm going to be knitting that first stitch with the ball yarn. Now, here's the point where I tell you what to do if this last stitch was made with the ball yarn. Then you want to, of course, hold that ball yarn to keep the stitch from falling off. And you want to knit that first stitch only with the yarn tail. Um, because otherwise you just can't knit it. If you try to knit this stitch with the same strand that it was made from, it will just drop back off and you know you won't be able to knit it. Okay, so I'm holding the very loose strand in my left hand. I am inserting my right hand needle and I am looping my yarn around and knitting that first stitch. And it will still be a bit, a bit loose, so I'm just going to keep holding on to that strand. The rest of my stitches on this side are twisted. If I zoom in, you can kind of see what I mean. So the right leg of this stitch, if you'll notice that here there is a left leg and here there's a right leg. The right leg is on the other side of the needle and usually it isn't. Uh, so these stitches are twisted and what that means is that we want to knit it like this instead of like this. So I'm inserting like this and wrapping my yarn around. Now you may not have twisted stitches here. Whether your stitches are twisted here or not depends on which way you wrapped the yarn around the needle during the cast on. So your stitches may not be twisted here. They may be twisted on the other side, for example. So just know how to recognize a twisted stitch and that you then need to knit through it like this. If you knit through it like this, it also, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's the very tip of your toes. Uh, no one's going to look at that. <laughs> so just knit all of these stitches. And then when you get to the very last one, your left needle will kind of drop off like that. Uh, so then we are at the other side of the work. We have now done half of a round, okay? So we are going to move our work. We're going to rotate it clockwise. Uh, we're gonna take our needle that is out of the work and slide it back into the stitches. Then the bottom needle, we slide it out. And now we insert into this stitch, take our yarn, make sure it is the ball yarn, and wrap around and knit these stitches. Now these stitches are not twisted for me. Again, they may be twisted for you, depending on which way you, you wrapped your yarn around for the cast on. So I'll be knitting all of these stitches and then we will have done one complete round. And again, my left hand needle is going to drop off. I'm going to be rotating my work so that this needle tip is facing to the right. The needle that is all the way out like this, I'm going to be sliding it back into the work and the other needle gets to come out. Now, say you are distracted during this step and you don't know if you've pulled the correct needle out, then, you want to take a look at where your yarn is. And it's a little bit confusing with the tail here right now, but from now on, when I refer to the yarn, I'm referring to the ball yarn. So take a look at where your yarn is. It's on this side. 
That's where we just knit. That is the most recent stitch that we knit. And because we're knitting in the round, we then want to move on to the other needle. So that's where the needle tip needs to be in the stitches. When, you're, when your toe is complete, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Uh, so again, we insert into the first stitch. Um, and now we actually get to do an increase. So how do we make our increases? I do a knit front back increase for, for sock toes. And that goes like this. So I insert, I wrap around, and I pull through. That's basically a simple knit stitch until now. But then you don't let it drop off the needle, but you insert into the back of the stitch. So like that. And then you wrap around again. And then you've made two stitches in one. And we make this increase at four points uh, divided across the round. So the first one is on the very first stitch of the round. And then we want to knit until we have two stitches left on this side and do the next increase in this stitch. So a knit stitch, but don't finish it. And then insert into the back, wrap the yarn around and complete. And then you have one more knit stitch to do. And the reason why I'm doing this on the very first stitch and then on the, not the last stitch, but the stitch before that is to make it symmetrical. So if you look very closely, you can see that there's kind of this bump there. It's almost like a little pearl stitch. So I have bump there and on the other side is there. And if we were to have done this increase on the very last stitch, then the bump would be at the side here. And the way we've done it now means it looks symmetrical. So it's purely cosmetic, <laughs> but um, yeah, this is the way I like to do it. So we are at the end of this side. So we rotate our work again. We move this needle into the stitches and the needle where the yarn is coming from is going out. And we're repeating the increase for this side as well. So I insert, take my yarn, make a knit stitch and then go into the back and knit another stitch and then i'm knitting until two stitches are left on this side right and then doing another knit front back increase and the last stitch We are going to be doing a lot of increases, but we're going to be alternating knit rounds with increase rounds. So right now we are going to be doing another knit round and then an increase round and then keep alternating that until you have your number of stitches. But I also want to show you something else now because once you have a bit of fabric in between your needles and for me it's usually after the first increase round then you can kind of already fold your work like this so that you see like a mini mini toe and the idea behind that is that we want to avoid ladders on the side so you can imagine that if you're knitting like this and you you knit stitches there and you knit stitches there and this is getting longer and longer um that you're going to create some ladders here because that is quite a gap between this stitch and the next stitch so you want to make that gap as small as possible and i find that it works best if i just try to to fold the work if i try to hold that cable 
to the left hand needle. So I'm just going to really squish them together, insert my needle into the next stitch, and then just take my yarn and knit those stitches. And I usually keep holding on to that cable until I've knit the, the first couple of stitches. So let me show you again on the other side. Okay, we turn our work. Oh, right, and for the first two rounds, it's easier to look at your work like this and say you rotate it like this. But now, once, once you're folding it, you can also turn it like this. Might seem a little bit weird at the start, but um, again, this is a thing that you'll get the hang of. So you'll insert this needle into your stitches, pull the other needle out, and again, I am folding my work. I am squishing that needle, um, squishing that cable to my left hand needle, inserting my right hand needle into the first stitch and then grabbing my yarn. And feel free to pull a little bit tighter on the first stitch just to uh, yeah, make sure that you don't get any ladders on the side. And then you keep knitting. So I'm almost at the end of my knit round. So then I do another increase round, then another knit round. And you keep alternating them until you have the number of stitches that is said in your pattern. So for example, I'm going to be knitting until I have 60 stitches. So that means 60 stitches in total. So 30 stitches here and 30 stitches there. I often get the question, how do you know if you've just done an increase round or if you've just done a plain knit round? And the key to that is that you want to look at those bumps that we create during the increases. And if that bump is directly below the needle, that means that you've just done an increase round. But if you can see a little knit stitch above it, it means you've just done a knit round. I've just done a knit round, so that means I need to do an increase round now. So let me make that first increase and show you the difference. So see that with my increase that I just made, that bump, that little purl stitch is really hugging the needle. But on this side, I can really move it downwards and I can see that little V above it. And that's how you know if you've just done an increase round or a knit round. So after you reach your number of stitches that is specified in the pattern, you want that to be your total number of stitches. So for me, I have 60 stitches, which means 30 stitches on each of my needle tips. Make sure to finish with a knit round. So again, you can see that the increase is a little bit further away from the actual needle. Here you can see the knit stitch above that. And then we are going to be changing to the main color, which for me is Capey's Downtown in Gallery Central. When you change to the main color, you want to attach it at the next color join because um, I just think it looks nicest when you start the sock. Let me show you on my other one. When you start the sock with a full color, uh, with a full stripe, instead of if it was just, you know, a little bit of a stripe and then continuing to do the first full stripe. I just think it looks nice. So what I do is that I pull out the yarn until I get to the first color change. And then I make my very first stitch with 
the yarn right after the color change. So I just attach it to my work and start knitting with it. And then yes, you will have a little bit of excess here and then you can just cut that off and continue knitting. And then you continue knitting with your main color or yarn B as it's called in the pattern until your sock is of um, the desired length to put in the heel. And, and when we get to that, I will also be showing you how to knit the heel. In the pattern, you will also find measurements that will tell you when it is time to put in the heel. Those measurements, you will measure from the cast on point of your toe to your current row of stitches. For me, that is 18 centimeters and it's just under 18 centimeters right now. But in my experience with knitting socks for myself, I find that this is usually okay. One extra point that I want to talk about um, for self-striping yarn is that I usually find that it looks nicest if you put the heel in in between two stripes or in the middle of a stripe. So that might also influence you to knit more or less rounds. If you want to place the heel in the middle of a stripe, you just knit to the middle of a stripe and make the heel on the next row. But I'm going to knit the heel in between two stripes. So I've got the green stripe here, which you also see here, and after that is the orange stripe for this colorway. And you want to knit until you get to the next stripe. On the next side, we are going to be doing the heel. And why is that? So say that I knit up to here and decided, well, I'm close enough to the orange. Let's do the heel on this side. Then you would have the heel and this little bit of green, you would have it on top of the heel and you would have just that little row or half a row of green. And I want it to be a clean line. So I've started the new stripe. I'm going to place the heel on this side. And for all sizes, we are going to be knitting the heel across half of your stitches. So if you have 60 stitches in total, you will knit it across 30 stitches. And to start the heel, we are going to be knitting across this side with our heel yarn. And for this colorway, I am pairing it with um, 37 Istanbul, which I've also used for the toe. So we are going to leave this yarn here and knit across this half of the stitches with our heel yarn. So I've worked across half of my stitches in my heel yarn. And now I actually want you to take a look at the pattern if you're able to um, have that beside you um, because it will really help you to be able to knit the pattern without having the video there. So in the pattern I say to turn your work to knit in rows. So we turn our work and instead of continuing on this side we only work on this side for the heel. So, you, so if you're working on a circular needle um, you're used to, you know, moving your needle, but you don't have to do that now. You can just keep it like this. We are working in row, so we are working on the purl side here. And for row one, which, uh, which says WS, which means wrong side, which is what we are seeing, it says with yarn in front, and we already have the yarn in front because we are on the purl side. So with yarn in front, slip one purl. So 
Slip one means to simply take it over onto your right hand needle. Per and the purl in there means that we do that purl wise. So we go in there as if to purl and slip it onto our right hand needle. And now comes the most difficult part of the heel. Um, slip one purl and lift the yarn from the front upwards over the right hand needle all the way to the back of your work. Tugging firmly forms a so-called double stitch, which is what we are seeing here. We are seeing those two uh, loops, which are from the color from our downtown yarn. So you don't see the heel color anymore. You see the color that you were using before. All right, so this is a double stitch. Do not call this two stitches because it is just one stitch. Is it? It is a double stitch and we will always treat it as one stitch. So then we have tugged firmly and then with yarn in front. So how do we move the yarn to the front again? Not like this because then we are undoing the double stitch. So we are keeping the yarn there, but we are moving it forward through the needles. So as if you were doing a ribbing and you had just done a knit stitch and now we are doing a purl stitch, you, you move it in between the needles to the front. And then purl all stitches until end of needle two. So you will notice in the pattern, I am uh, naming the first half of your stitches needle one and the second half needle two. So purl across needle two. Then on the other side, you will notice that the, that the last stitch pulls a bit large because that's where the yarn end is. Uh, and we turn our work at the end of the row and continue working on the right side. And we move on to row two of the heel and it also says RS in between brackets, which means right side. It says again with yarn in front. Now we actually have to move the yarn in front because the yarn is in the back. So yarn in front, slip one purl. That's the same as for the other side. So slip one purl. Uh, lift yarn to back as before. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, lift the yarn from the front upwards over the right hand needle. And again, this forms a double stitch, but it will look different on this side. On this side, it will kind of look a little bit twisted. It might look as if um, there's a little X on your needle. And I'm also, I'm holding this end here because it makes it a bit easier. So it looks like this. So kind of like a little X, if you can see that. All right. Uh, lift yarn to back as before, and then it gets to stay at the back because we are doing knit stitches. And for knit stitches, we need the yarn to be at the back. So keep the tension on and knit. And this time we don't knit all of the stitches. We knit until you reach the next double stitch. And for this one, it's really easy to recognize because half of it is in a different color. So you will easily see it. You cannot even see the, the X that I mean here. So you will knit up until and including that last normal stitch and you will leave that heel stitch on there. So we knit two here to be first double stitch and then we turn our work and we are at row three, which is basically the same as row one. It says with yarn in front, and we already have that, slip one purl, then move your yarn to the back and tug it firmly as, if, as we've done before. And then with yarn in front again, so move it in between 
those needles to the front so your yarn has now basically looped around the right hand needle and now we are going to purl our stitches until the next double stitch so that is on the other side here and it's a little bit more difficult to recognize this one because it is not in two different colors um, but you might recognize it by the shape now so you will knit all of these stitches up until here and leave this double stitch on the left hand needle So let me show you here. I have one regular stitch left and then one double stitch. So I'm going to knit that regular stitch. And now we take a look at the pattern. It says repeat rows to two and three until you have a certain number of stitches, depending on your size, until you have that number of stitches left in between your double stitches. And what does that mean? Of course now we still have a lot of double stitches I mean a lot of normal stitches in between the double stitches because we have one double stitch here two double stitches here and basically we have all of these in between so when these stitches um, when you have the correct number of stitches in between then you move on to the next step of the heel which I will also show you in this video all right, so on to the second part of the heel. And let me explain to you where exactly that starts. So you finish your last double stitch on the wrong side, then you come to the right side, and then you do another double stitch. And after that, you should have an even number of stitches in between your double stitches and for my size i want to knit until i have 14 stitches in between and i have that now if i had just turned well, let me just get this back on the needle if i had just turned my work and not done the double stitch yet then I would have 15 stitches and that would leave me confused right because it was an odd number of stitches so you only count the stitches in between when you've already made that double stitch on the right hand side so I'm knitting all the way across to my first double stitch and we are knitting that double stitch as if it is one stitch and you want to make sure that you go oops let me show you that correctly you want to make sure that you really catch those both loops of that double stitch and then pull the yarn through and then you can turn your work and let's look at row two of the pattern so we have slip one pearl again tugging firmly that just means to just tug firmly here it does not mean to tuck the yarn to the back because we don't want to be creating any more double stitches now so slip one pearl tuck firmly um, pearl until next double stitch So I'm at my first double stitch on this side and here I want to purl it as if it is one stitch. So I insert my needle purl wise and again you want to make sure that you have caught that stitch through both loops. You wrap your yarn around and you purl it as if it is one stitch. Then you turn your work again so we're at the right side again and now we are at row three um, the yarn is at the back and it stays at the back please note that in the pattern i'm not saying with yarn in front so that means the yarn just stays 
at the back for now. Um, slip one purl again, tugging firmly, and then knit until the next double stitch. So in this second part of the heel, with each row that we work, we are eating up one double stitch at the end and then turning and then also working our way across and eating up one double stitch at the end and going back and forth and back and forth until we have eaten up all of those double stitches. And you might notice that before you come to a double stitch, there's this gap and that is totally normal. Um, and usually the gap closes up enough when you knit that double stitch. So don't freak out uh, when you see the large gap because I have that too and it's part of this method. So just continue until you have worked across all of the double stitches. And when you've knitted the last double stitch here on this side, don't forget that you still need to turn around to knit this double stitch on the other side. So you might be tempted or you might just forget and, you know, continue working in the round. But there's still a double stitch right here that we need to knit across. And when we've knit that very last double stitch over there, we turn our work to the right side and if everything is correct then you're back here where your downtown yarn is the main color and we will continue with that and you can cut your heel yarn but before we start to knit in, in the round again we need to pick up a couple of stitches and because if we just start here to knit in the round um, there would be quite a hole here quite a gap so we want to pick up some stitches on this side and we want to pick up stitches so that it doesn't leave a hole so we don't want to pick up this bar right here we don't want to pick up this bar here um, usually yeah if you look at your stitches, which are kind of built like a V, you don't want to pick up those side stitches. Those usually tend to get into create holes. But if you dip in there and take the horizontal bar, that tends to pull things a little bit tighter. And I tend to pick up stitches from this first column that comes from this first heel stitch. So you want to pick up one or two bars here. It doesn't really matter. Um, if, you, if you pick up two bars, uh, you're less likely to have a hole because, you know, you, you fill it up with two stitches instead of one. But you can also just pick up one. Uh, just make sure that you pick up the same number of stitches on the other side. So make sure to remember. So I'm going to dip in here and take two stitches. And I usually take up the stitches of the main color instead of the heel because I think that looks nicer. And I lift them on the left hand needle and then I knit across them. This stitch is a little bit loose because my yarn ends are here. And then we just knit across this side of the sock and do the same on the other side. Here we are on the other side of the heel and here as well I'm going to look at the column of stitches that comes from that first heel stitch. So the first column on this side and here it basically works the same but I'm also going to knit them on this needle. 
So I'm, it's a little bit of maneuvering with your needles here. So from this column, I'm going to pick up two bars and I'm going to knit them on the right hand needle so that all of my extra stitches are now on the heel needle. And so you want to, to make sure that if you've picked up two stitches here, you'll pick up two stitches here as well. Um, and you know, if you picked up one, then you just pick up one here. And these stitches, you will keep them for, you know, maybe one, two or three rounds, and then you will decrease them away uh, one by one. So you won't decrease two stitches at once on a side, but just you knit a couple rounds, decrease one stitch on each side, then you knit another round and then you decrease the second stitch on each side. Or if you if you think, well, I'd like some more room around my ankles, then you can also keep them for a bit longer. So after a couple of rounds, I'm going to decrease my first stitch here by knitting two stitches together like this. I will do the same on the other side, then knit around and then do the same again. All right, and I am ready to start the cuff on my socks. And let me just give you a quick rule of thumb for when I start the cuff. So usually I fold my sock flat like this. And the finished sock, I want it to be, I want it to line up with the, with the cast on. Um, so that would mean doing this much of ribbing. And I think, I think I want to do that much. So, but with the self-striping yarn, you can also very easily count the stripes that you've made. So for my size, I've knitted 10 stripes here for the foot. And then I've also knit 10 stripes for the leg. One other thing to keep in mind when working with self-striping yarn is when exactly that you switch to the cuff color. Because I have quite a bit left still of the blue before it changes to the pink. Um, I probably won't be able to do a full side, but I don't really need to, I think. So I think I'm just going to continue knitting until... I'm just before the color change and then change color to the cuffs. So let's see how much I can still do. Coming up to the end. Okay. <laughs> okay, I can probably do one more. Okay, but I can see some purple seeping into those stitches. So I'll, I'll stop there. And then I will change to the cuff color. And with the cuff color, you are going to want to do one full round of just knitting. And let me show you why. Because if you do a knit stitch and you change color, it looks fine. But um, if you do ribbing right away, then it will show because a purl stitch will take the stitch underneath and pull that back up. So you will, you will see that. So that's why I'm going to do one full round of knitting first. And when I've knit one complete round of the cuff collar, then I will proceed to actually knitting ribbing for the cuff. The ribbing that I'm going to do is knit two, purl two. I'm going to end this side with a purl two. Switch to the other side. 
and then knit two, purl two. Now you can see for the purl stitches here that it's not lifting up any of the blue anymore. So I'm going to be continuing this knit two, purl two until the cuff is of the desired length, and I usually knit between 15 and 20 rounds of ribbing, but I know many people dislike ribbing, so feel free <laughs> to do less. But I do, I do want to say that a longer cuff um, is really nice for, for the fit. So go ahead and knit your cuff. To cast off the cuff, we are using Lori's Twisty Bind Off, which is a very stretchy bind off and very suitable for socks. And the thing I like about this cast off is that it gives you a very stretchy edge, but that when unstretched, it is still straight. It is not flaring out um, like some other stretchy cast off methods. So that's why I really like this. Um, if you do it correctly, you'll see a kind of a zigzag shape at the edge. Um, I do recommend uh, getting a short needle or a separate needle in, the, in roughly the same size uh, to help you cast off because, um, and it's totally doable with just one circular needle, uh, but to start you might want a separate needle. Um, because we are going to be twisting this needle and if you know if your cable doesn't behave then <laughs> that may be a little cumbersome so um, we are going to be twisting the stitches around their axis and that will give a more stretchy edge so I'm on my second sock here on the first one where I started the cuff a little bit earlier a little bit before uh, the halfway point of your stitches and I started the cast off also at exactly that point just to clarify that we are going to work the first stitch as we normally would and the cast off technique starts from the second stitch and we are going to rotate this stitch around and the rotation the direction depends on which stitch comes next uh, this is a knit stitch and we want to turn away from us and a way to remember that is that, you know, if you were to knit this stitch, you would go in like this. So with the needle pointing away from you. And another piece of advice, uh, even if you knit English style, you want to just hold your yarn in your left hand just to keep it out of the way because we don't want to be twisting that yarn as well. So we are going to be twisting this stitch like this I'm gonna do it again so I have my stitch here and I'm gonna rotate it away from me if you're worried that your stitch will fall off the needle you can place your finger on the stitch then rotate it and let it go and then I'm going to knit the second stitch and lift the first one over the second the next stitch is a purl stitch, so first off I'm going to take my yarn to the front and we rotate this stitch toward us. And you can remember that by, you know, if you were to insert into this purl stitch, you would insert like this. So the tip of the needle will also be toward you. So I'm going to rotate the stitch like this and then Curl the next stitch and slip the first one over the second. The next one is also a purl stitch, so I'm going to rotate toward me and work that stitch. Next up we have a knit stitch, so I'm moving my yarn to the back and I want to be rotating away from me.
and we continue doing this method for all the stitches. And I think you can see why a separate needle would come in handy here. And so I'm going to continue doing this and I'll show you what to do at the halfway point of your round. If you're noticing that your stitches get a little bit big, then you can, after rotating, you can pull on the yarn a little bit more. Sometimes they get a little bit long while rotating, and then you can cinch them back in like this. And by the way, if you're doing a one by one ribbing, um, this cast off method works the same. You just rotate your stitches uh, depending on which stitch comes next. I'm at the halfway point now, so I'm working this last stitch. And then what I do is I pull this needle through and I continue like this. And when you've come to the end of the cast off, you can break off this yarn and then we can weave in our ends. And for this very uh, last end of the cuff, we also want to do a little bit of sewing here uh, because now we kind of have a kind of a staircase. Uh, it's not a completely straight edge. So we want to bridge the gap between here and here. So I'm going to insert somewhere here Um, and you see that as I tuck on this yarn, that this stitch comes closer. And I want to create another little stitch here by going back in here and creating this nice little stitch. Now we are ready to weave in our ends uh, on the inside of the sock. And with the ribbing, I usually like to weave it into this column of what looks like knit stitches here on the back, but it's actually purl stitches on the front, but that doesn't matter. Um, and I'm weaving it in one of these columns. And I'm using a very sharp needle so that I can go in the stitch. Um, and that it won't show on the outside. And I'm kind of using a twisting motion to go in those stitches. And I go all the way to the beginning of the cuff, and then I go back and do the same. In the other direction. But this time I don't go all the way to the end because um, if we snip off this thread we don't want it to poke out outside your sock. Right and then for the other ends, um, so this is how I weave in ends in ribbing, but for the other ends um, it's a slightly different method and I'll show you what it looks like with this end. It's quite short, but I can work with that uh, because it is a contrasting thread. So you you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, and the first thing that I want to do is check out this gap in between those ends. And I want you to notice that if I take this thread and I would weave it in this direction, this gap is still there. Uh, and similarly with this thread, if I weave it in this way. But if I weave in this end this way, 
and this end this way, then that gap is closed. So I'll just weave in this end in this direction. And again, I'm splitting the stitches so that you don't see it on the right side. Oh, another tip, because uh, sometimes I like to pull my yarn apart and instead of cutting it, and then you have a little frayed edge here. Um, if you have that as well, you can fold it over your darning needle and then you will have a much neater edge uh, to pull through your needle. And yeah, it's, it's easier for me. Um, so this thread, I want to weave it in this direction. And again, I'm going through the stitches, really splitting those stitches and pulling through. And then I'm doing the same in the other direction. And here I'm really making a kind of a U shape, but you could also do that. Oh. Um, you could also do that in, in just a different direction. So for example, like this. As long as there is a kind of a corner uh, in the way you weave in your ends, then if you tug on your project, then that end won't get, um, it won't unravel or at least not as easily. And that is how I weave in my ends. And I do that in, a, in the same way for all of the other ends in my sock. And for the ends that you have alongside your heel, if there, is, if there are some more gaps, you can use it too. Uh, close up that gap a little bit more. And that is how I finish my socks. Thank you so much for knitting these socks with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, and I hope that these will be the first of many, many more pairs of classic new leaf socks. I want to thank Escape Use for sponsoring the yarn to make these socks. And I want to thank my testers for knitting these beautiful pairs of socks as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Please do leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, maybe leave a comment. Um, I will leave any relevant links down below and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye!